only a few fragments of his volumes have survived through citations. He dated Christian or creation, that is, taking place around 5500 BC by using the Septuagint numbers and covered history up to 221 AD in his work, which is why the 225 date is often proposed as a possible composition date. What's interesting is that he dated March 25th, 1 BC, as the incar incarnation date for Jesus with Gabriel's announcement to Mary that she has conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. And what do you get when you add nine months to this? December 25th for the birth of Jesus. There's other factors to the March 25th selection, but what this shows is that, and actually proves, is that the idea of Jesus being born on December 25th predates the critics' notion that Christianity borrowed it from the Sol Invictus celebration of the pagans for the winter solstice. This birth date was simply the effect of adding nine months to the March 25th date. Now on to his 70 weeks interpretation. This passage, therefore, as it stands thus, touches on many marvelous things. At present, however, I shall only speak of those things in it which bear upon chronology and matters connected therewith. That the passage speaks then of the advent of Christ, who was to manifest himself after 70 weeks, is evident. Africanus next brings up the six outcomes of the 70 weeks being fulfilled in the time of Jesus and then launches into his system. And the beginning of the numbers, that is, of the 70 weeks, which make up 490 years, the angel instructs us to take from the going forth of the commandment to answer and to build Jerusalem. And this happened in the 20th year of the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia. Two notable things here are that he says that the 70 weeks are 490 years, and that it started in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. In modern chronology, this would be roughly 40, 445 BC. He then goes on saying, For Nehemiah his cupbearer besought him, and received the answer that Jerusalem should be built. And the word went forth commanding these things, for up to that time the city was desolate. For when Cyrus, after the 70 years' captivity, gave free permission to all to return who desired it, some of them under the leadership of Joshua the high priest and Zerubbabel, and others after these under the leadership of Ezra, returned, but were prevented at first from building the temple and from surrounding the city with a wall on the plea that that had not been commanded. It remained in this position accordingly until Nehemiah and the reign of Artaxerxes and the 115th year of the sovereignty of the Persians, and from the capture of Jerusalem, that makes 185 years. And at that time, King Artaxerxes gave an order that the city should be built, and Nehemiah being dispatched, superintended the work, and the street and the surrounding wall were built, as had been prophesied. So, Africanus sinks the 20th year of Artaxerxes, with the 115th year of the Persian Empire's reign and 185 years from the start of the exile period, which when you subtract those two from one another, you get the 70 year period. Moving on. And reckoning from that point, we make up 70 weeks to the time of Christ, for if we begin to reckon from any other point and not from this one, the periods will not correspond and very many odd results will meet us. Now, if you've already been thinking about the whole chronology matter here, is that in 445 to, let's say, a max point of 3380 is only 477 years, not 490. But don't worry about that because Africanus is going to address it. For if we begin the calculation of the 70 weeks from Cyrus and the first restoration, there will be upwards of 100 years too many, and there will be a larger number if we begin from the day on which the angel gave the prophecy to Daniel, and a much larger number still if we begin from the commencement 
of the captivity. So Africanus's point is that if you start with Cyrus is that you will be over by 100 years and even more so if you start from the start of the captivity. I know you might be thinking that those dates are wrong that he has there, but just keep in mind that chronology wasn't such a refined thing in those days. Now, Africanus addresses his own chronology issue. It is by calculating from our Xerxes, therefore up to the time of Christ, that the 70 weeks are made up according to the numeration of the Jews. Now, if your ear perked up with that last statement, then good. For from Nehemiah, who was dispatched by our Xerxes to build Jerusalem in the 115th year of the Persian Empire, and the fourth year of the 83rd Olympiad, and the 20th year of the reign of Artaxerxes himself. The important piece here is that you see Africanus using Greek Olympiads as sinking points. He goes on. Up to this date, which was the second year of the 202nd Olympiad, and the 16th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, there, reckoned, there are reckoned 475 years, which make 490 according to the Hebrew numeration. So Africanus knows there's 475 solar years between the 20th year of Artaxerxes and Jesus' crucifixion because his Olympiad dates calculated are the fourth year plus 118 full Olympiads plus two more years in the 202nd Olympiad that gives you 470 five years. But he says that this is okay because it equals 490 years in the Hebrew numeration. Now here comes something very important for some of you to hear because Africanus explains how this is possible. As they measure the years by the course of the moon. So he's saying that Jews followed a lunar calendar and not a solar one. He goes on. As is easy to show, their year consists of 354 days, while the solar year has 365 and a quarter days. Notice that he said a Jewish year was 354, while a solar year was the normal 365.25. This is huge for two reasons. One is that if you've heard that the Jewish year was 360 days made up of 30 days per month, you might want to think a little bit more about that now because Africanus would not agree with you. And the other is that people knew the general time frame for the course of a complete year likely as they were tracking the sun's path around the ellip uh, ecliptic, that is. He goes further on this point saying, For the latter exceeds the period of 12 months according to the moon's course by 11 and a quarter days. Hence, the Greeks and the Jews insert three intercalary months every eight years for eight times 11 and a quarter days makes up three months. You see that this does make up 90 excess days at the end of an eight year cycle, which is three months that would need to be inserted somewhere within the eight year cycle. He's not saying that all three of those months were added at the end of the eighth year to line things back up. They're just dispensed within there. And don't worry, we'll be also discussing all these little calendar issues and systems down the road when we get back into verses 25 through 27. Africanus' point is that although the Jews followed a lunar course for their annual calendar, is that they still acknowledge that corrections were needing to take place Ever so often, that ultimately means that they were using a lunar solar calendar in the grand scheme of things and not just a lunar one. He finishes with math by showing that if, or sorry, he goes on by showing the math that if you multiply the 490 years by the 354 lunar days is that it equals 173,460 total days that then divided by 365.25 is that you come just under 475 solar years, but that it would still land you on the 16th year of Tiberius for Jesus' crucifixion. 
A reminder, hit the subscribe button below, turn on the notification bell, hit the like button, leave a comment, and don't forget to visit us at JustScripture.org. But in the meantime, stay salty.